Hi, my name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. In today's video we'll be covering a topic of the difference between a vacuum chamber and a pressure pot when it comes to resin casting. Check out the video. Right then, so in today's video we'll be covering the main differences uh, between both of these, how they work and why should you use one over the other. And I'll try to show you which one is actually better when it comes to resin casting. So let's start. So the main purpose of using either of these is to remove air from your castings, from your resin. So you've got a nice clear casting without any air bubbles in it. So when you think about it, a vacuum chamber should be just the perfect tool for the job as it is taking out the air from the chamber, from your resin. So in theory, this is the perfect solution to remove the air bubbles from your casting. So quickly, how this contraption works. First of all, you've got a chamber of some sort and in this case, it basically looks like a big pot. On top of that, you've got, in my case, an acrylic uh, see-through uh, lid with a rubber band around it. That is to help to create a solid bond between the chamber and the acrylic top. On top of it, as you can see here, you've got a gauge and the arrow is pointing to the right hand side. And that's because we are removing the air from the container. So that's indicated by bars. As you can see on this side, this lever is the valve that releases or closes the air that comes into the pot. Whereas this lever here will open and close the valve for the vacuum pump itself. And I'm gonna show you in practice how these levers work and how to operate them in just a few moments. But obviously, as just mentioned a second ago, you need the pot, you need the lid, and you need the vacuum pump as well. My setup is a budget one. So for example, the acrylic lid, they do have a tendency to break and a tempered glass would be far better, but it is far more expensive. But I had this uh, vacuum chamber, the whole setup for a few years, and at the minute there's no issues with it, the lid holds as well. To operate the pump is really, really simple. Obviously, depending on what model and what make have you got mine, I need to make sure I've got enough um, oil in it. There is a on and off switch at the back, and that's all. On the other side, we've got the pressure pot. Now, mine is a specially designed pressure pot for resin casting, but you can see uh, many of those pressure pots for paint and you would have to actually amend them a little bit to be able to use them for resin casting. But that's a totally different topic. Mine is designed to work with resin casting. Um, all the stuff I've got here, I'll try to post some links down below in the description of this video so you know what I've got and more or less you know where to look for things. Now the pressure pot works totally different to the vacuum chamber. In this case, we are pumping a lot of air in an immense pressure inside of this pot. Now, what that creates, it actually doesn't remove the air from your casting. What it does, it actually contracts and squeezes the air bubbles inside of your casting, inside of the resin, to sizes that are actually not visible to human eyes. So the pressure is forcing the air bubbles in a way to disappear from our visual experience. They're still there, but they are basically not visible at all. As before, we got a gauge, but as you can see, actually the arrow is pointing the other way as we are forcing air in. And the indicator on mine is in bar and PSI. Now, in my case, I always uh, aim for about 40 PSI as more or less the right amount for me. Also, you've got the whole contraption here 
to attach the hose from your air compressor. And also you've got the valve here that will open the airflow inside of the tank and also it will allow to release the air from the tank itself. Also, you can increase or decrease the amount of PSI or bar you actually want in your pot. Now that's some absolutely basic information about both of these. I'm not going to go into a greater detail. There are far better uh, websites that will explain how these work in detail. But what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to show you how these operate, how they work and why I think one is better than the other for resin casting. And you can then make up your mind which one would be better suitable for your needs. So I'm going to mix up some resin. I've got a resin from Resin Pro. I do recommend this resin is very good. To be fair, most of the uh, resins that the store offers are absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to drop a link uh, down below to the Resin Pro store. Um, you can actually get 10% off from your shopping and the discount code again is down below in the description You can check it out. It's a affiliated Discount so you can support my channel while doing your shopping and getting 10% off few details about the resin itself It's up to two centimeters of casting the working time over an hour So it's a fairly good and decent resin where you don't need to rush and it will give you enough time to do anything you need to do with it. The mixing ratio is by weight 100 to 60 and the full cure time is 24 hours. As you know, the amount of different types of resin is absolutely massive. I actually do have a really good um, playlist with some tutorials about resin, resin casting, what to use and all that. I'll link that below in the description as well. One thing we need to remember when casting resin and trying to use the vacuum chamber is that some resins will cure very quickly in 20 minutes or even shorter than that. In that case, in that scenario, the vacuum chamber will definitely 100% not work for you. Why? Because to allow the air to escape from your casting it actually needs some time. It all depends how much air is in the mixture, but usually it will be between 20 minutes to even 40 minutes, depending on how much resin you mix and how much air it's inside. So that's one of the downsides of the vacuum chamber to start off. To actually use it correctly, you need a resin with a really long open working time window and hopefully this resin will have that and a plus side of the pressure pot you definitely don't need to worry about curing time actually this is fantastic for resins that cure very quickly you can do your pour into the mold whack it inside put the pressure and that's it you are all done but let's mix some resin and i'll show you exactly what i mean By mixing in this way, I'm introducing, I'm trying to introduce as much air bubbles as possible so you can see later on the results even in a better way. So obviously do not mix your resin in this way as it will introduce a lot of air bubbles. And again, the same thing with the second batch. One will go to the pressure pot and the other one to the vacuum chamber. Okay, so first of all, we'll put our casting into the pressure pot. Just making sure there's a lot of air bubbles in both. It's the um, resin caster's nightmare, all those air bubbles. Okay, so what you do, take off the lid. Put the resin in there. Lid back on and we need to make sure the um, pressure pot is really locked tightly. Okay. 
and by releasing the valve just over here we can add air pressure to the tank. We need to remember to add the air, add the pressure slowly as a stream, a strong stream of air going inside of the pot can actually cause the resin to be splattered all over um, in your pressure pot and we definitely don't want that. So do it very slowly. And the same thing is when you're going to be opening the valve to release the air, you do the same thing, just do it slowly, mainly due to safety reasons. And I'm about 40 psi, that's what I need to be at, and I'm closing the valve over here. And at this point, I can disconnect the um, air compressor. And that's it. Leave it to cure. How about the vacuum chamber? Well, first of all, we need to connect the hose to our outlet, just over here. Now it's time to plug in the pump and now it's time to put our resin in. Again plenty of air bubbles inside as you can see um, so let's wag that in into the pot. I'm actually putting something underneath here just to make sure I don't have a massive spillage in my tank and you'll see in just a moment what I mean. Okay so now the lid make sure the connection between the lid and the pot itself is nice and solid and when you turn on the pump try to put a bit of pressure on it so the lid catches the tank and it creates a vacuum inside. As you can see this valve at the minute is open and the dial here is not moving so what that means the air is still going through here inside of the tank and the vacuum is not building so we're closing the valve here and as you can see the vacuum is rising full vacuum will be achieved at minus one and what you're going to be able to notice with the resin is that the air bubbles are starting to come up to the surface you can actually see that it's starting to create a foam at the top, like from a beer. The problem is, the foam will start rising to the top of the container. That is very problematic if you're trying to cast something in a mould, as the foam itself will overflow the mould. So at the minute I'm at minus one bar and we can switch off the pump. When the pot will lose its vacuum, we'll turn on the pump again. And as you can see, it's still bubbling and the air is coming out from our resin mixture. If I let some air inside of this pot, it will kill all those air bubbles. but we can still build up more vacuum. Now with the vacuum uh, applied, we just need to wait until all the air bubbles disappear from the top. Okay, so after about 25 minutes, 28 minutes, um, the resin has stopped bubbling. We only got really, I think, maybe five or six air bubbles at the top of the resin. So we can say it's now ready to use for casting. So I'm going to remove the um, vacuum from the chamber very, very slowly. We can now remove the lid and check out what we've got here. There you go. It's absolutely clear, as you can see, no air bubbles at all. So now, in this state, this resin is perfect for casting, although it took about 25 minutes to get it to this state. And it all depends on what resin you're using, 
and how much of it. If there was more resin, it would take longer to get the air out of the casting. You cannot really use a mold, a ready mold that you want to cast in the vacuum chamber. As you've seen, um, the resin will foam up as the vacuum removes the air from your casting. That's what you can achieve. You've got a clear to clear resin, no air bubbles in it. The problem is now, if you want to use it for casting, you need to pour it into your mold. And even by doing that, you will introduce air bubbles. Whereas with the uh, pressure pot, you are actually putting your resin into the mold you need, put it in the pressure pot, add the pressure, and that's it. You leave it to set. Both of the solutions will speed up the curing time of your resin. How much? It all depends from many factors and it's actually very difficult to say exactly. Now the cost of both of the setups will be fairly similar. Yes, you can get a budget one like I did, a thing that costed me about 200 pounds and the pressure pot I bought, I think it, that was um, about 180 British pounds, but on top of that, you need an air compressor. Again, there could be a cheap one for about 30, 40 quid or I've actually got a 50 litre uh, compressor that I actually use in my workshop for other tools and other jobs. Whereas the vacuum pump that comes with this setup, you're not gonna use it for anything else. On the other hand, the pressure pot, you're really not gonna be using anything else apart from casting resin. Whereas with the vacuum chamber, it's actually perfect to degas silicone. So if you are making molds for your projects to degas the silicone you are actually making the mold from, this is perfect tool to do that. On top of that, uh, if you're working with, for example, wood, and you're making projects with wood and resin, so you may want to stabilize your piece of wood. What that means, using a special designed resin, for example, a cactus juice resin, that you pour in the tank, put your piece of wood inside, put it on the vacuum, and what that does, it removes the air from the wood itself, and by doing so, it introduces the cactus juice inside of the wood. When the process is fully done, you then take that piece of wood out and put it in an oven, as the resin cures by heat. So when you introduce heat to it, it basically sets, and then you've got a piece of wood that will be resistant to moisture, and obviously it will be far easier to cast it with resin and you're gonna get far better results and quality of your products. So you do have other options, few more options of what you can use the vacuum chamber for, whereas the pressure pot may have only that one specific task to do in your workshop. So all in all, yes, you can use a vacuum chamber to degas your resin, but you have to remember about a few important steps. A, the resin you, you will be able to use is only the ones that set after a long period of time. You will not be able to use a resin that sets in let's say 15 minutes, as the resin will basically set on you before you will be able to remove the air from it. And in that case, the pressure pot will be absolutely perfect for that task. It will excel for resins that got a short working window. But hey, we're gonna wait 24 hours for both of them to set and we'll see the results and we'll be able to compare them. Thanks to the magic of the video, for you that will be just a second, but for me it is 24 hours. So I'm going for my dinner. See you in a minute. Right then, so it's the next day. Let's check out the results. First of all, we'll have a look at the casting that we made in the vacuum chamber. Really nice and clear. I can actually see, <laughs> I can count them. One, two, three, four, five tiny um, air bubbles inside of there. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to, uh, to see them. So yes, it is possible to achieve a fairly decent result with the uh, vacuum chamber 
but it requires a lot more of your time, attention, and not every single resin will be suitable for this. And obviously you cannot have your casting in your mold inside of the chamber as it will foam up and it will mess up everything for you. So let's check out the pressure pot. Now this is 100% clear. There is no even a single visible air bubble inside of this casting. It's clear as daylight. Uh, this is the other one again. I oh, know on camera you probably won't be able to see any difference. So this one is from the vacuum chamber, that's from the pressure pot. And the results are very, very similar. I hope that this video gave you a bit of an information and insight of what you can actually expect from a vacuum chamber and a pressure chamber and which one may be actually better suited for your needs and your projects. Perfect scenario is to have both as then you can widen the range of the products you're making and the projects you can actually tackle. If you've got any more questions, drop me down below in the comments section and also I recommend my playlist with some tutorials when it comes to resin casting and how resin works and how it all looks like. I'll drop the link to that playlist down below as well so you can check that out. As always guys, if this video was helpful to you, drop me that like button down below and if you want to find out more information about resin casting and resin projects, they will be steadily coming to this channel. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press that bell notification icon and change it to all so you don't miss any of my videos. But for today, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Take care.